In a shuttle launch, weight is crucial and very expensive. It costs NASA a whopping $10,000 a kilo to defy gravity. In fact, around $80 million has been spent ferrying six tonnes of water up to the International Space Station. That's $40,000 a gallon, around $10,000 a litre. If NASA could recycle its water up in space, it would not only save millions, it would also help mankind get to Mars. A mission to Mars and back would take more than two years, way too long to take all that water with them. A US company here in Reno, Nevada, has a system that can recycle an astronaut's waste fluids. Sweat, tears, exhaled breath, even urine. And more importantly, the same system can be used to give millions of people in developing countries crystal clear water. Now, you know on Beyond Tomorrow, we like to put the technology through its paces. Well, my producers say, I've got to put this one to the ultimate test. Drink my own urine. The things I do for this program. Let's just freeze my personal humiliation right there and take a close-up look at this whiz-bang technology with the emphasis on the whiz. This is a prototype, but there is a cartridge like this on every space shuttle that has ever flown. More than 20 years ago, chemical engineer Jerry Colombo developed a way to make sure astronauts had safe drinking water. This anti-contamination valve keeps the shuttle's water supply clean by using iodine to kill bacteria and other bugs. We put iodine on a plastic bead, if you will, and then they, uh, the bead releases it into the water on demand. Jerry's big breakthrough was developing special resin beads impregnated with iodine that release the chemical in a slow and predictable way. There's enough iodine here, just 100 cc's, for a lengthy shuttle mission. That'll handle 30 days worth of water for a crew of six. I mean, it seems remarkably simple. It right? is, simple it way. is. That's yeah. the best part. Best ideas are very, very simple. Jerry's simple but clever idea is a key part of this new water recycling unit designed with astronauts in mind. It uses the slow-release iodine filter, along with a whole raft of other filters, to clean up even the nastiest bodily fluids. This is how the system works. The dirty water comes in through this big pipe here and then goes through a whole series of filters. First port of call is this one. And there's a particle filter in there. Basically, inside here is this thing. And it's a, it's a very fine plastic mesh that filters out the dirt and the other particulate matter. In fact, you can filter out particles down to one micron, one millionth of a metre, so pretty fine filter. Once the particulate matter's taken out, the water passes through the second filter, which is a carbon filter. So inside there is something that looks like that. Now, carbon absorbs chemicals. So in this process, the herbicides and the pesticides are taken out of the water. Then the next stage is around here, this little one down here, which is where the iodine is added to the water. Now, the iodine kills living creatures, so it kills off the viruses and the bacteria, giving you some quite clean water, but it's now full of iodine. So there's a couple of filters here to take out the iodine because that only tastes bad. Uh, for some people, it also is bad for them. They're allergic to it. And there's one final step in the process. Back here, now there are some bugs that this whole system just won't kill. Things like Giardia, Cryptosporidium that have to be killed in other ways. What they do is actually just filter them out. So inside here is this incredibly fine filter down to half a micron. So basically the bugs just can't get through here. And out of the pipe in the end is beautiful, clean drinking water. There are no meters or valves. It's simple. Ideal for up in space or down here on Earth. The advantage of that is in space you want things as simple as they can and as an extension in uh, third world countries you want it as simple as possible. A staggering one billion people, one in six of the world's population, don't have access to clean drinking water. Many millions of these, a lot of them children, die every year from drinking unsafe water. To prove how the filtration system would work in developing countries, the company building the water purifiers has organised a field test. 
The water here near Reno is dirty, polluted, and looks totally undrinkable. Aha, this is the setup. Yeah, here it is. This is our discovery system. Uh, this produces about 15 litres uh, per minute. So that would be about 6,000. 15 litres a minute? Yeah, 22,000 litres a day you could get out of this one system. Ken Carney's company, Water Security, has also built a compact portable unit that pumps out two litres a minute. Okay. So where this would be used is if we had 10, 20 people in a very small village, we could again use this the same way we're using that, only we just pump it by hand. So there's no solar panel required, no electricity required, it's just a simple... Nothing at all. And it is portable. You can carry it with you. So, so this is going to be used in all kinds of disaster relief situations, small villages, uh, missions out in the field. The large purifier costs six and a half thousand dollars and produces fresh water for just one cent a litre. I'm pretty convinced, so now it's time to swallow my pride, and a lot worse as well, with my own personal recycling test. This filtration system better be good. Here it is. You got the secret ingredient, huh? The secret ingredient. How about it? I'll put a couple of drops in, will I? Oh, be brave, be brave. Well, a whole lot, you reckon? Sure. Okay. What can it hurt? <laughs> you don't have to drink it. I'm going to stir it up real good, real good. Uh, if you'll step over here, yeah. and uh, I have a special glass for you. <laughs> very nice, very thoughtful. Yeah. Look at that. Champagne. <laughs> I've never done this before. It's a big moment. Tastes better than Sydney water. That's perfectly fine. Another. Would you like a glass? Well, no, I think I'll uh, <laughs> I'll pass for right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does taste amazingly good. A simple idea that could be saving lives here on Earth and allowing mankind to push back the boundaries of space exploration.